Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Buttered Home and welcome to Messy Kitchen Monday. So glad you could join us tonight. Be sure if you're here, let me know you're here. Give me a wave. And tonight I'm really excited because as I've mentioned before, it's National Soup Month. And it just so happens that I didn't find that out until after I had already started <laughs> featuring soups. So January, cold weather, it all just kind of goes together. So it's really a no-brainer. Uh, anyway, I'm really excited tonight because tonight we are doing a really, really good Italian sausage and cheese tortellini soup. Um, there's a lot of di different variations of this soup. Some people call it like Italian wedding soup. But uh, this is one of those that you kind of just throw everything together. And I know here in the South, casseroles are a big throw together. But I hope that this month and every Messy Kitchen Monday episode we've had has shown you that you can do the same with soup. And as usual, we're going to start with just a little bit of a roux base. Uh, this is a real brothy soup. It's not a thick soup. So you don't want to get it too thick. So you just want just a tad in there. But in my opinion, a roux base is always the best way to go. So uh, just a few notes about the uh, recipe. The sausage is just regular ground Italian sausage. You can buy that in the links. And if you do, you just remove the casings and then just crumble the sausage and brown it. I bought a pound of already ground, uncased Italian sausage and I cooked it earlier just for time. So anyway, I'm going to um, do my thing, move my camera, and then we're going to get started. So be sure and let me know you're here. Somebody's already. Hey, Belinda, it's good to see you here. Where are you, where are you watching from? That's something else. When you give away, tell me where you're watching from. So if we have any new people tonight, because I know we've picked up some new people this week, uh, we'll know um, who's joining us. So we're really glad to have you, and be sure you put a wave down there and, and tell me where you're watching from. And that's not the buttered recliner, Danny. I don't need to know. I know where you are. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the panoramic view and get you all moved. We Tomka. Hey, it's so glad. Hey, we are very glad to have you here with us tonight. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we had some pretty severe weather come through yesterday. And Wetonka was hit very hard. So, Belinda, we're pray praying for you and your community and, and all the great people up there uh, in Wetonka. So, uh, we hope that everybody in your neck of the woods is okay. <clears throat> all right, we're getting refocused. And there's Jasper! <laughs> All right, so you see, on messy, messy Kitchen Monday, I have a good messy pot. This is where I actually browned my um, sausage earlier. So I, I drained my sausage, but I left just a tad of the fat in here because fat is good. <laughs> so we're going to turn our heat on, if I can get it to light, about medium high. And I just want to render that fat down just a little bit that's in here and i'm going to add just about a teaspoon of olive oil and then of course it wouldn't be the buttered home without butter right so we've got just a good tablespoon of some butter here and i'm going to get this melted <clears throat> And y'all, soup is a good way to clean your pot, too. If you'll notice all of the sausage residue that I have in here, um, once I start to deglaze this pan, that's going to go away. So, we'll just get the butter good and melted. And in with that olive oil. And then the next thing I'm going to add is some... Roughly chopped green onions. Now, because this is not a thick base soup, it's kind of brothy, I like to add some green in there. And you'll see that a good bit of green is going to be featured at the end. And that's the surprise ingredient. 
So at this point, just to kind of help sweat these onions out, I'm gonna add just about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and about the same of pepper. The salt is really what sweats the onions out. And if you've never heard the term sweat the onions out, that just means kind of cook the water out of them. So we're just gonna heat those through till they're soft and translucent. <clears throat> and you'll notice, see, some of the sausage fat's already kind of cooking away. All right, so they're pretty soft. So at this point, I mean, it is an Italian soup, right? We're gonna add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. And we just wanna heat that through. Garlic will burn really fast, <laughs> so. You want to kind of just stay with it. And my rule of thumb is, is whenever you start to really smell the garlic start to cook, then your garlic is golden. So at this point, I'm going to actually make the roux base. And I have a little bit of plain flour, and I'm just going to sprinkle it in until we soak up some of that liquid, maybe a little more. And like I said, we're not using a lot of flour in this roux base because this soup is a soupy soup. It's more of a brothy soup. So we just want a little bit of flour in there, cooked in there with the fat to just kind of smooth things out. So this is the start of a lot of really good things, fat and flour. And I know I've said that, what, three weeks in a row now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that kind of cook for just a minute. And I explained last week why we do that. Because we don't want our soup to taste like flour, we kind of have to cook that flour taste out of the roux base. I'm not sure if it was just me or not, but there's a little bit of a lag whenever you're talking about making sure that the garlic was cooked correctly. So if you can Sure, okay. Tanner said there was a little bit, uh, it may have just been her phone, but whenever I was talking about cooking the garlic through, garlic will burn really easily. So um, that just bears repeating if it did kind of break up on your end. To just kind of cook that garlic just until it gets to be fragrant. Once it begins to be fragrant, uh, then you can add in some of your other components and that way your garlic's not just sitting on the bottom of the pan. All right, so we've let that cook just a little. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add just a little bit of vegetable broth. And we're not adding the whole amount of vegetable broth because right now, what we wanna do is we wanna deglaze this pan. And the vegetable broth kind of aids in doing that. It aids in removing those wonderful bits of sausage that were kind of cooked on the bottom. And you see, because it's kind of melded with the flour, it's starting to get thick. So that's your roux base. Now, if you were cooking like an onion gravy, right here, you would just kind of add about a cup of broth in here and let it turn a rich golden brown. Uh, there are so many things that you can do with this this just thing right here. So it's kind of deglazed the pan. The bottom looks relatively clean whenever I kind of swish it away. So now I'm gonna add in the rest of my vegetable broth. And what I have here is about four cups of vegetable broth. I'm gonna turn my heat back up. And at this point, while we're waiting on the heat to come back up, I like to add in just some aromatics. I've got a beautiful parsley, and then of course some basil. And I would say probably anywhere from an eighth to a fourth of a teaspoon of each of these. And then I have some ground oregano. Make that about a half a teaspoon of ground oregano. 
<laughs> but it wouldn't be messy kitchen now if I didn't mess up just a little bit. So I kind of want these flavors to just kind of mix in and meld with the broth. And the reason why I'm using vegetable broth on this is because the sausage is my protein. So I really want the sausage to stand out in this soup. <clears throat> All right, so now I've brought my broth up to temperature and I'm gonna add in about two cups of water. And I suggest just kind of drizzling it in like I'm doing y'all because you'll burn yourself and make a big mess if you're not careful. And then on my stove, you know, I can bring it back up to temperature pretty quickly. But if not, just kind of be patient and stay with it. And you see, adding about two cups of water, it really didn't take away from here at all. Now, just because we do this in layers, and I don't like to over-salt, I'm gonna add in a little more salt because this is a vegetable broth, not a chicken broth. Chicken broth, unless you get the low sodium chicken broth, can be kind of salty if you're not careful. But vegetable broth doesn't tend to be. So now we're just gonna make sure we bring that temperature back up. get everything good and in there and then here I have a pound of Italian sausage that I'm going to carefully add in that I browned earlier we're going to bring that up to temperature as well And what I'm doing is because we've got all this in here, I'm just continuing to kind of make sure that I've got the bottom of the pan clean. It's not so much that I'm whisking it to thicken it because it's not gonna be a really thick soup. But mainly I just wanna make sure that I get all that good stuff off the bottom of the pan. All right, I can feel that my heat has come back up pretty well. And if you'll notice, I got some big chunks of sausage in here. All right, I like that because you know, it's soup, and soup, I don't know about you guys, but I like to have a good chunkiness in my soup so that it doesn't feel so much like you could drink it out of a cup. <laughs> you know, you want your soups to, to feed you like a meal, so adding a little bit of chunk to that sausage or whatever protein that you're putting in your soup, I mean, that's always a good idea. So now I have... Uh, some cheese tortellini and I got these in the frozen section and let them just I drained them and let them sit out and just come to room temperature and thaw and we're gonna slowly add these in as well now these will make a huge mess and can really burn you if you're not careful so I've got about a 12 ounce package of cheese tortellini going in with my sausage and my broth and these cook up in five to eight minutes so you're just gonna heat those through as well and if you wanted to at this point you could just let it simmer and let that pasta cook everything else is cooked it just has to kind of sit together and just kind of marry one another now, while you're doing that, here is our surprise element. Y'all know I love any kind of greens, so adding in a, just a rough couple of handfuls of baby spinach in here just makes this soup just rich and so pretty. And you've got the vegetable broth, you've got the protein from the spinach, the cheese and the tortellini, and the broth and all. This is just a good feel-good soup. This is a good Italian noodle soup here to ward off any bad cold day. And while the tortellini is cooking, the uh, spinach will wilt. If I can get it all good and mixed in. 
<laughs> and what I like to do is whenever we serve this up in the bowl, just put a little bit of shaved Parmesan on top. Or either just, if you have just regular old spaghetti Parmesan, you can sprinkle a little bit of that on top. And that's why we didn't add a whole lot of salt. Because anything you dress it with at the end, as far as cheese goes, and Italian cheeses especially, are already going to be kind of salty. Even mozzarella. It's not as salty as Parmesan, but it still does have some salt content to it. So my rule of thumb is... You can always add salt. You can't always take salt away. So I think it's better to under-season your, your anything you make. And anybody can kind of dress it to their fancy. So there you have it. That is our cheese tortellini and sausage soup for tonight with spinach made with vegetable broth. I'm going to let this simmer for a little while. And if you want to get a good look at it, I'll move the camera. It's really pretty, really good and filling soup. And it's perfect for a cold day. And it's perfect to fill you up. So a lot of soups that you might see, you might think that doesn't look very appetizing or not very filling. This is a very filling soup. So, um... I'm really excited that y'all joined me tonight, and I hope you like this soup, and let me know if you try it. I'll try to have a recipe up uh, in the next week or two for it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to add a link at the end, but if you have not heard, or if you're on the fence about joining the Busy Gals Cooking Club, don't delay. The cart's going to close on February the 1st, so sign up for the... Um, Coupon code founding member for, <laughs> sorry, it's a dog circus at my house. Uh, the founding member coupon code gets your first month for $5.99. So we're going to have a lot of great ideas, not just soups, but a lot of recipes that you can cook that are like soups that you can put together in a relatively small amount of time and feed your family join together one another and fellowship with one another in the kitchen or at the kitchen table and disconnect to reconnect and eat together and and be with one another so the busy gals cooking club if you're on the fence join today use founding member as your coupon code and all caps all together and that will get your first month for $5.99 we've already got people in the group uh, there are a video or two in there, and uh, we're working to get those recipes put out. The shopping list are actually going to go out end of next week, if I've got my days right, for the first week's recipes in February. So don't wait. Get on in so that you can get a jump and uh, fellowship with us. We're going to have a really good time there. And if you want to know more about it, because I'm not going to ramble too much, there's another video <laughs> underneath this one that I did the other day all about the Busy Gals Cooking Club. So if you're interested, there'll be a link at the end of the video where you can go and check it out. So from the buttered home to your home, y'all stay warm this week. <laughs> Enjoy some good soul warming soup and we love you. Bye.